normal studio setup and microphone for the daily financial news. But hey, we've got some stuff, family stuff scheduled today, but I think it is important to still do the live daily show. So that's what we are going to do. Regardless of location or microphone, we're still going to get the job done. So hopefully you appreciate that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So let's talk about what the All In podcast just said yesterday. We can talk about delinquencies in the real estate market going up 51%. Yes, folks, remember, when folks quote percentages with real estate, specifically around delinquencies or foreclosures, it's easy to make them sound bad. Delinquencies are up 51%. We will get into the details here in a moment. We can also talk about what the chief economist of Zillow is saying, or Redfin, excuse me, Redfin, and what is Zillow saying about home prices. So folks, let's get into it. This is the daily financial news for Sunday, the September 24th. And the first thing I want to give a shout out to is the boot camp members that were a part of our buy box discussion yesterday. We did day two of the boot camp. I had a lot of fun. We've now given them all some homework and we will be getting back together about two weeks from today. So it is turning out to be a lot of fun for me. I am learning a lot and hopefully they are as well. Let's get into the All In podcast. If you listen to the All In podcast this week and if you want to skip ahead about an hour, they start talking about what the Fed is doing. Right, the Fed is higher for longer. You heard Chamath talk about his early thoughts about you know making cuts and survive to 25. He now is saying survive till 26. What we're really seeing in that, although they never use these words, in my opinion, is the Fed is killing the Fed put. Wall Street has been trying to push, cajole Powell to give them ZERP, zero interest rate environments. And Powell is saying, no guys, you're not listening. This tool that you have used to get rich and ladder on risk is now gone. I still believe the Fed meeting last week was exactly what I was hoping for. I wanted him to be a velociraptor. I wanted him to come out like tough Paul Volcker. I still believe it's a show. I believe it's a show he had to do. So what do I mean by that? I believe we are done raising rates. I believe the numbers will start to roll over in a pretty aggressive way in Q4. I believe we are absolutely in a rolling recession. You actually heard David Sachs talk about B2B SaaS going down and coming back while maybe the consumer is getting weak. All In Podcast also talked about the consumer, and I agree. I think what we're going to see is some delayed gratification. I think it was Jason who talked about they're going to skip an iPhone cycle. They're going to keep their car longer. And yes, folks, he even talked about putting two kids in a bedroom. This is back to my old saying, invest in bunk beds. The consumer is not great, not great. So they're a lot better when they get checks from the government. But uh, given that the um, fixed rate debt in the U.S. today is something like 85 or 86 percent of total debts, the effective interest rate on mortgages, which is our largest payment, is 3.6 percent. It's not going to feel great. We're going to see a lot of um, just kind of plodding along. Uh, but we've got to get through this period, in my opinion. So uh, I do think we don't get another raise this year. And I believe it's the Fed's goal not to cut all of next year. So we will see what happens. Uh, anything else from the All In podcast that I noticed? Yeah, defaults alive, uh, forced mergers. Ah, the idea of capital scarcity. I wanted to talk about that, capital scarcity. I think it was David Sachs again that talked about capital scarcity, and that's what I see coming. They were, of course, talking about private equity, investing in startups, but I think this idea of um, scarce capital or capital scarcity is exactly what eliminating the Fed put is, right? We're still sucking liquidity out of the system via QT. That will continue uh, for at least the next 18 months. So yeah, I think the idea of capital scarcity is real. I think a lot of LPs, whether you're in equity deals, private companies or syndications are in for some rude awakening. Um, but this is, just, this is just how we have to get through this cycle. Uh, let's talk about Zillow. Zillow put out a uh, thought about home prices over the next 12 months. 
Uh, Zillow has come out and said that they expect home prices to go up, up 5% in the next 12 months. And that, of course, is with 8% mortgage rates as of today. I think that's a little aggressive. I'm going to stick with my flat, flat being plus or minus 1%. Um, it is very interesting uh, to watch. Um, it's very interesting to watch people come around to the idea that you and I have been talking about for a year. These people talk about affordability. They talk about home prices to income. All of these things to scare you. Where in reality, 2020 and 2021 were really good years. There are some, some charts out there that I see all the time on X or Twitter that are so incomplete as to be insulting. Uh, but that's, that's what sells in this environment, doomers and whatnot. So again, I like the fact that I just saw, I think it was Jeff block a doomer uh, yesterday. Folks, you have to block them. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I frankly have never told you it would be easy. In fact, what is one of my most common sayings? Do the work. On that topic, something I wrote on the, head of my, on the top of my notes today is, I want to change something up. I did this last year, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to do it again right now. Usually you hear me talk about doing good or great deals. I'm going to take good off the table until the end of January. So if you follow what I talk about, you're doing the work, you understand average, and you're doing good or great deals, please, for right now, for the next four months, we're only doing great deals. If you are a buyer slash investor today, please understand you have the power. Yes, I know your memory is short. I know we remember bidding wars and waiving inspections and all of that. But trust me, at 8% mortgage rates, you guys have the power. Please, please, please write better deals. You're going to have to follow up. You're going to have to write multiple offers. But that is the process we are in. So again, uh, the other thing Zillow said in their forecast, again, prices going up 5%, is they expect home sales this year to be $4.1 million. I think that's about right because you got to remember the first four or five months of the year <coughs> were actually pretty good. It'll be interesting to see what happens next year. They are forecasting interest rates to be around 6% by the end of the year. I think that's going to be a little aggressive. I think we'd be lucky to be in the sevens by the end of the year, uh, but we shall see. On that front, we got Fed officials talking tough, folks. And again, this is what they should be doing. This is what they should be doing. Uh, they, should, they said inflation could be around above 2% until 2025. Uh, Susan Collins uh, from Boston uh, favors one more rate hike this year. Again, I think it's theater. I think, th I think it's them talking tough. I think it's them letting the market know that they're not cutting. It looks like the market has already taken out one or two rate cuts next year. Right now, it looks like uh, they're only factoring in two price cuts. We'll talk to Taylor tomorrow about that to verify. But again, this is, this is what I've been looking for. you got to kill the Fed put. You've got to punish financial speculators. You have to punish financial engineers. You have to create capital scarcity. And... We have a painful sideways market for the next little while, certainly in real estate. Folks, it looks like President Biden is going to join the picket lines. I don't know if you saw this, but apparently on Tuesday, uh, Biden is traveling and going to be picketing with the UAW auto workers. Um, going to be lots of pictures of that on Tuesday. So get ready for the news media to jump on that. Uh, my thoughts on the UAW strike are really kind of the same across the board. I think labor needs to get theirs. I think labor uh, for 40 years has been um, underappreciated, right? When you look at a business, there's really three, con three parts, in my opinion. There is labor, there is executives, and then there are stockholders or equity. For the last 40 years, stockholders and executives have taken a disproportionate um, share of the pie. And I believe the next three to five years, it's going to be all about labor. Uh, so I do believe that. I do think labor needs to be careful, right? You don't want to create a cost structure that um, prevents profitability, that uh, could potentially impact your pension, right? So I think there is some math involved. Uh, but generally speaking, 
uh, the bottom 50% of income earners, in my opinion, will be getting uh, their fair share. And uh, we're going to see where all of this goes. And some of that absolutely will be inflationary. There is no question. Let's talk about distressed commercial real estate learn loans surging nationwide. As I said in my intro, they are up 51%. What does that really mean? <clears throat> well, they went from 4.5% in June to 6.8% in August. That is a roughly 51% increase. So that out of the way. That said, 6.8% delinquency, not good. No bueno, bad. And getting worse. And the trajectory is bad. And you just had the Fed say they are staying higher for longer. So you have people that were hoping for lower rates. It's not coming. It's not coming. And you have a banking environment where there's less lending. Not coming. So um, this pain is going to get ratcheted up. And with capital scarcity, there are going to be some spectacular losses. Also, of course, remember, where there is great pain, there is great opportunity. Back to my earlier statement. Until the end of January 2024, I only want one rental at a time students to do great deals. We don't know where this thing's going. So if you can do a great deal because you found a motivated seller, you've organized terms, seller financing, 90% CLTV, whatever it is, you can still do great deals. And I would argue at 8%, it's going to be easier to find motivated sellers and do great deals. But please, it is never easy. It takes work. It takes discipline. It takes follow-up. Uh, but it is possible. Believe it is possible. Believe in yourself. Do the work. There is no easy button in all of this. Uh, what else do I got? Oh, new home sales. New home sales. Did you know? New home sales, typically speaking, are about 11% of total transactions. 11 in a normal cycle. They were 32% in July. To me, that's wild. New home sales were 32% of total transactions in July. That is a number to watch. I think we get new home sales next week, so I'll be paying attention to that. Um, and then finally, Daryl uh, Fairweather, chief economist of Redfin, basically is saying people are delaying buying homes. Uh, and also delaying selling homes. Folks, this is the broken housing market. It is where we are at. I do think that we're going to be sideways for three to five years. I do believe it is possible to get great deals. It does take work. It takes finding motivated sellers. It takes negotiating. But it is possible. Don't forget to get seller credits, closing costs, rate buy-downs, whatever it is. This is the time to ask for everything. All right, folks, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful day. Bye.